The last two lessons introduced two individual practices in which you observed physical sensations, sensations throughout your body and the sensations of breathing. Both of these meditation techniques are useful on their own, yet they also prepare you for the more difficult practice of observing your thoughts and emotions. In the practice of Sakshi Bhava, you become the awareful witness or conscious observer of all your mental activities, all your vrittis, not just your sensations. Including thoughts and emotions in this practice is much more difficult because it's so easy to get involved or entangled with them. You have to observe all your thoughts and emotions with utter indifference complete detachment, and perfect objectivity. A helpful metaphor is to think of your mind as a room full of objects, the objects being your thoughts, emotions, and sensations. Sensations enter the room of your mind through the windows of your senses. Your five senses look outwards, towards the world, and allow sight, sounds, smells, tastes, and touch to shine in, so to speak. All day long, the room of your mind is constantly filled with ever-changing sensations. But at night, when you sleep, blinds are metaphorically drawn over the windows of your senses, shutting away the outside view. The room of your mind is usually cluttered with all kinds of thoughts, ideas, planning, decision-making, problem-solving, and so on. And your thoughts are constantly changing, so new ones continue to appear inside the room of your mind as old ones fade away. The room of your mind is also filled with emotions, like frustration from having to work so late, or hurt from someone's harsh words, or joy due to getting a promotion. Like your thoughts, your emotions are also constantly changing, but they change more slowly. Frustration, hurt, or joy might linger in the room of your mind for minutes or hours, yet New emotions can quickly appear in the room, especially when they're triggered by dramatic events in your life. Your moods are a bit different than emotions. They change more slowly, and they're not always connected to specific events in your life. Mood is like the lighting inside the room of your mind, sometimes bright and cheerful sometimes dark and dreary, slowly shifting over a period of hours or days. Finally, the room of your mind is furnished with closets and cabinets that provide ample storage for all your memories. Whenever you choose to, you can open the door to a cabinet of memories and retrieve items from the past. But sometimes, a huge pile of intense memories can push a cabinet door wide open and spill out into the room of your mind. Whether you retrieve memories intentionally or if they tumble out of a cabinet, the result is the same. They fill the room of your mind with more stuff, more vrittis. I hope you liked the room metaphor. It can really help a lot in the practice of Sakshi Bhava by enabling you to recognize all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations in your mind as mental objects, objects that you observe just like things in a room. To practice Sakshi Bhava, you have to remain completely detached from everything you observe in the room of your mind. 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes detachment like this. Yo asino, one who remains, udasinavat, completely indifferent, totally detached from the mind's activities. Na vichalyate, is not affected. Gunarer, by the gunas, by the qualities of your mind. Now, consider what happens when you sit inside a room that's filthy or if it's dark and gloomy. The nature of the room seems to affect you, at least as long as you remain inside. But if you were standing outside the room, looking in through a window, it wouldn't affect you at all. This shows what happens when you metaphorically sit inside the room of your mind. You'll feel like you're affected by all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations there. But if you could somehow view the room from outside, if you could watch your thoughts, emotions, and sensations from a distance, as it were, then you wouldn't feel affected in the same way. To completely detach yourself from your mind's activities, some kind of separation or distance between you and your mind is necessary. You can't be a detached observer as long as you remain inside the room of your mind, thinking your thoughts, feeling your emotions, and perceiving your sensations. Instead of thinking your thoughts, you have to watch them. Instead of feeling your emotions, you have to witness them. And instead of perceiving your sensations, you have to observe them. The practice of Sakshi Bhava requires a radical shift of perspective. You have to view the room of your mind as if from outside. To shift your point of view like that doesn't mean you have to leave the room of your mind somehow. It's simply a matter of shifting your perspective. Look at this. With a mental shift, you can see either a vase or two faces looking at each other. With some practice, you can easily shift from one view to the other. In the same way, you can learn to change your perspective towards your own mind, shifting from being inside the room of your mind to being outside. By shifting your perspective like this, you can observe the thoughts, emotions, and sensations in your mind while remaining completely detached from them for the practice of Sakshi Bhava. In the following exercise, we'll practice Sakshi Bhava by observing thoughts and emotions arising in your mind in addition to sensations. For this exercise, it's best if you sit in a place that's suitable for meditation. You can listen to this exercise using a laptop computer, a tablet, or a mobile device like your phone. This exercise is also available as a podcast or download from our website using the links in the video description below. I hope you are now seated comfortably in a suitable place. This exercise will take about 10 to 15 minutes. First, sit with a proper posture as we discussed before. Close your eyes gently and take a deep breath to get settled down. Now, make a sankalpa to affirm your intention and commitment to meditate. Acknowledge the fact that you have many unfulfilled responsibilities and issues that need to be addressed. 
Since you don't want to be distracted by those things during this meditation, you can give yourself permission to set all those concerns aside just for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Now, we'll begin with a body scan like we performed in the previous exercises in which you observe sensations from each part of your body one part at a time. Start by turning your attention to your feet and becoming aware of sensations there. Notice the sense of pressure as your feet press down. Notice the touch of your clothing and feelings of warmth or coolness. Next, turn your attention to your ankles and calves Notice sensations of pressure, the touch of your clothing, warmth or coolness. Now, turn to your knees and thighs. Notice the weight of your hands or arms where they rest and any other sensations. Now, turn to the trunk of your body. Feel the weight of your body pressing down. Feel the firmness of the seat beneath you. Next, turn to your lower back and stomach together. Become aware of sensations. Now, turn to your upper back and chest. Become aware of sensations. Now, your right arm, starting with the upper part. Then your forearm, wrist, hand, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Now your left arm, the upper part, forearm, wrist, hand, thumb, Index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger. Finally, your shoulders, your face, and your head. Now, in the next part of this exercise, Imagine yourself outside the room of your mind, observing its contents from a distance. Witness all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations without making mental comments or judgments about them. Just observe, silently, passively. Continue to imagine yourself outside the room of your mind, observing its contents from a distance. Witness all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations without making mental comments or judgments about them. Just observe, silently, passively,
for one more minute, imagine yourself outside the room of your mind, observing its contents from a distance. Witness all the thoughts, emotions, and sensations without making mental comments or judgments about them. Just observe silently, passively. Now, in the next part of this exercise, try the labeling technique we used before. Name or label every thought, emotion, or sensation that arises in the room of your mind. For example, when you wonder about how much longer this exercise will last, label it, thought, thought. If you feel bored or frustrated, label it, emotion, emotion. And if your knee hurts, label it, sensation, sensation. Continue to imagine yourself outside the room of your mind, observing its contents from a distance. Label each thought, emotion, or sensation without making other mental comments or judgments about them. For one more minute before we conclude, continue to imagine yourself outside the room of your mind, observing its contents from a distance. 
label each thought, emotion, or sensation without making other mental comments or judgments about them. Now, as we conclude this exercise, stop observing your mind and just listen to these closing remarks. You can practice this technique whenever you want, listening to this exercise again or without it. If you practice it independently, you can choose to use the labeling technique or not whichever works better for you. In the next lesson, we'll discuss the practice of being mindful, not just during meditation, but throughout the day.